It came from the radio. At first, it was possible to ignore. But the sound would not go away. It only got louder. And louder. And louder. In the early hours of April the 7th, 1994, the call to kill got so loud it drowned out everything else. It swept across the country like a storm. For 100 bloody days, Rwanda experienced one of the worst atrocities in human history. And the international community stood by. Those that survived the genocide asked the United Nations to help rebuild a trust that had been lost, and through justice, put the country they remembered back together. The mandate was clear. The way forward was not. Hundreds of thousands of victims, tens of thousands in jail, but the courtrooms were empty, with rumors of only five judges and a handful of lawyers left alive. From its first makeshift courtroom, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda went to work on a formidable task. Its mission, to locate, apprehend, and prosecute the architects of the genocide. Over the last 20 years, the tribunal delivered judgments that define, for the first time, how the world confronts acts of genocide in a court of law. It was the first time since the Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals to convict a former head of government. The plead coupable. The first to convict for rape as a tool of genocide. The chamber confirms the life sentence against John Paul Akaisu and the first to convict members of the media for inciting genocide. These broadcasts shock the collective conscience of mankind. And beyond the courtroom, the tribunal's legacy is not just one of legal precedents, but also a record of legal reform in Rwanda, and outreach, education, legal training, and healing. Today in Rwanda, it's safe to listen to the radio again. The sound is of a nation rebuilding and a world pushing forward despite great imperfection. Each day closer to a time when international law offers justice to all people, everywhere.